Correct, uh, dear devotees. Thank you very much. So, welcome to ISKCON HSR Youth Center. So, we are going to have a special class today on Jagannath. So, we'll try to understand the secret behind the Jagannath form, the special form that you have Daru Brahma form. And uh, all of us have some, you know, doubts about why Jagannath is looking like this, right? So, how many of you know the story behind this form? Any of you know why Jagannath is looking like this? Okay. One more question. Okay. Okay, we'll try to understand um, the secrets. <laughs> why Jagannath is looking like this? And uh, what is the speciality in this uh, form? We'll try to understand today. Okay. So let's enter into the story. So as you are aware, Jagannath and rightmost is Jagannath and the leftmost is Balara and in between Subhadra. Jagannath means Krishna. Balara means Baladev. Okay. Subhadra Mother. These three are uh, uh, children of uh, Devaki and Vasudev. Right? Devaki and Vasudev. Actually, if you see Devaki was a sister of Kamsa, and when she got married, uh, there was a you know Akashamani who said that, that you know Kamsa will be killed by Devaki's eighth son, okay. eighth uh, children. She did not mention it is whether it is a son or a daughter. It mentioned eighth children will kill you. Okay. Then Kamsa is a you know, demon, so demonic activities he does. So he immediately wanted to kill. You. Uh, Devaki, so that uh, he will never be killed. Okay, he will become immortal. Okay, so with that reason, when he is trying to kill uh, Devaki, Vasudev stopped him and said that you know, killing itself is a sinful activity. On top of that, killing a lady is another sinful activity. And not only killing a lady, you are also killing your own sister. That is another big sin. And another logic that he mentioned is you are killing a girl, lady, who is actually celebrating marriage at that time. So uh, there is nothing worse than this situation. So please don't kill her. Okay. And then uh, Kamsa did not listen. So then he had to offer all the children to Kamsa so that Kamsa will leave them for now. Okay. So now the problem is for uh, Vasudev, what he thought is, okay, let me stop Kamsa for now. Maybe after a year, if Kamsa can change his mind or whatever new things happen, maybe uh, due to some or other reason, if Kamsa says that, you know, okay, uh, then both will be will not be killed. So then he felt, okay, whatever you are saying is right. Vasudev is a great person and Vasudev is promising me, so definitely he will fulfill his uh, words. So then Kamsa said, okay, I will leave you now. But you have to give me all your children so that I will kill them. Because uh, he has a threat only with the children. He kept on killing all the children. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six children he killed. Okay. As soon as they born, Kamsa killed all six children. Seventh baby, before he born, actually, with the help of Yoga Maya, Krishna moved a baby from the Vasude, uh, Devaki's womb to the Rohini's womb. Okay. So that was seventh baby was Balram. Okay. Balram actually took, you know, entered into the Devaki, Devaki's womb. But before he, before Devaki gave birth to Balram, uh, the stomach changed, womb changed to Rohini with the help of Yoga Maya. This is called Sarogasi today's. Uh, okay. So the surrogacy happened and uh, and Kamsa thought it was aborted for uh, it was an abortion for uh, uh, Devaki. Then the next children is uh, uh, Krishna. Okay, when Krishna born, so he has again created a Maya, and then all the soldiers, whoever is uh, you know watching them, they all fell in sleep, and then uh, Vasudev was you know tied with. Uh, uh, 
um, these uh, shackles. So the shackles have been removed and the gates got opened and everything was dark. And uh, you know, was there was there was instructed to take him to Kukul. Okay. So just to born a baby on the same day, he was moved to Gokul. Okay. In the Nanda, Nanda's house, Nanda Maharaj's house, Nanda and Yashoda. At the same time, Yashoda Mata gave birth to one girl. Okay. So what Vasudev did was they kept Krishna in um, uh, uh, Yashoda Mata's uh, place and then he took that girl and then he has taken back to uh, the jail. Okay. Then once he entered it back into the jail, again, situation became normal again, like how it was earlier. Okay, so everybody got up because of the crying babies. The baby was crying, so everybody got up and they, they realized that, you know, uh, Devaki has given birth to eighth child. Okay, then immediately all these, uh, you know, soldiers, they went and told to Kamsa that eighth child came. Then uh, he started uh, uh, coming and then he wanted to kill the child also. He is not worried. He is not bothered whether the whether that is a girl or boy. So he was having a threat with the eighth child. So he tried to kill her. And then the moment when he he was holding the legs and then trying to hit the head on the floor. Okay. When he was doing that, then the yoga maya slipped from his hand and uh, uh, she went above and then she started talking that you know I am not the one who is going to kill you. Okay, and she has taken a Durga form. Okay, she has taken a Durga form and said, I am not the one who is going to kill you. And there is another person who has already taken birth and growing somewhere else, and he is going to kill you. Okay, then Kamsa was generally a demon. The demons generally worship Durga, so he respected Durga because uh, Durga has taken a birth from the womb of Devaki. So he started uh, respecting Devaki also because uh, Durga Mata is, you know, Devaki's child. So then the, the deity that he is worshipping uh, is the baby of Devaki. So Devaki must be greater person. So that's why he started and he has relieved them. And then he relieved them and said that, okay, uh, now I'm going to relieve you from this prison. So then Krishna's childhood pastimes, all the pastimes performed in Gopal, along with Gopis, Gopas, all this, Radha, everyone. Okay. Then when Krishna has grown up, before Krishna grown up, Kamsa started sending so many, you know, Asuras, demons to kill Krishna and Krishna has killed all the demons that Kamsa has said. I think we will, when the opportunity comes, we will discuss about each pastime that Krishna has performed in Gopal. Okay, in detail we will discuss. That's not the subject uh, today. Okay. So Krishna was taken to Madhura when he was young. Okay, around ten years. Okay, maybe around thirteen years, approximately around thirteen years. Krishna was taken to uh, eleven years. Eleven years. Okay. When Krishna was eleven years. Krishna was taken. Akrura came. Akrura came from Madhura and taken Krishna to uh, Madhura. While he was taken to Madhura, then everybody was crying here. Gopas, Gopis, Nanda, Yashoda, everybody was crying. So everybody was missing Krishna because till now they have been working for Krishna. Krishna centric activities only in Vraj, in Vrindavan. Okay. Especially Gopis, they miss Krishna like anything. Because uh, uh, the Gopis have cried like anything, and they, in fact, they they spoiled an approval also for taking Krishna. Okay. And uh, in fact, they don't uh, even want to miss Krishna for the time that we actually flap our eyes. Okay. That much time also, they don't want to miss Krishna. In that situation, if Krishna is going and they don't know when Krishna will come back again. Okay. So that was the separation, uh, you know, feelings that gopis have. And in Srimad Bhagavatam 10th Canto, the complete description is given, like how the gopis are feeling at that time and what they have done in, in that instance. And they tried to beg Akrura, they tried to beg Nanda Maharaj, they tried to beg Yashoda, they tried to beg the Indra also so that he can pour the rain so that the journey will stop. <laughs> so 
So somehow they tried to do, but the uh, Akrura did not stop. He has gone to uh, Mathura. And when Krishna went to Madhura, he killed Kamsa. Then uh, he never turned back. He never returned back to uh, Gopul again. He never returned back to Vrindavan. So here in Vrindavan, all the gopis are missing him. They are in separation. But in that separation, they are singing every day. And they are missing Krishna. Krishna is missing them. Okay, later, Krishna moved from Madhura to Dwaraka. Because he killed Kamsa, Kamsa's uh, uh, wife's father. Uh, what is his name? Janasandha. Okay. So Janasandha was uh, his uh, uncle. Okay. His uncle wanted to kill Krishna because Krishna killed his daughter's uh, husband. Okay. Every day he used to come with some. Uh, you know, some level of show in his, uh, uh, you know, Sena. Every day Krishna used to go to the uh, banks of, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, you know, the village outside and then they use, he used to kill, Krishna and Balarama used to kill Jarasandha's, uh, you know, army. Every day this is happening. Every day morning this is the activity. Like how we go for walking, right? <laughs> he go for a walk and then he will kill some level of show in his, and he will come back. That's how he is doing every day. And it happened like that. 18 days it happened. So Krishna decided that, you know, this is not a safe place, safe place for uh, the Roman people, sorry, Madura people. So overnight he constructed a uh, Dwanaka. Okay. Dwanaka palace he constructed with the help of Vishwakarma. Vishwakarma is the architect of Devatas. That overnight he shifted all Dwanaka. Uh, you know, villages into uh, uh, sorry, uh, Madhu, from Madhura, everybody got shifted to Dwarka. From then, uh, Janasandha could not do anything because Dwarka is a protected, uh, uh, you know, palace. Nobody can enter into Dwarka without uh, Krishna's permission. Okay, that's how he built. It is in between the sea, under the sea, he constructed. Nobody knows where Dwarka is, nobody knows how to enter into the Dwarka. So that's how it is. That's why Dwaraka is Amelitya. Nobody can enter into the Dwaraka. So he was ruling there. Like, uh, although he was a king, he can be a king, but he did not become a king. He gave the kingdom to Kamsa's father. Okay. Ugrasena. So Ugrasena was ruling. And he was there uh, as a just, uh, no, uh, uh, no advisor. Kind of. So uh, in this situation, he has also done some pastimes in Dwaraka. When he was in Dwaraka, he went to Dhammasar's place, Narakasur, we call it, Narakasur. He killed Narakasur and he got 16,000 wives, 16,100 wives. And then, before that, already Krishna was having eight wives. Okay. So, total 16,108 wives Krishna has. So, in Dwaraka, Krishna has constructed 16,108 palaces. So that each wife can stay in one one palace, and Krishna stayed in each house. Okay, each palace he stayed with each wife. So that's how he is living. Every wife is taking care of Krishna like anything, because Krishna himself is an ultimate uh, for the love. Okay, and Krishna's wives definitely they must be you know deserved personalities who can become you know wives of Krishna. So they are taking care. But uh, all the wives observed one day, we are taking care of Krishna so well, but Krishna, when he was sleeping, he was crying. One, uh, one night in the dream, he was crying, literally crying, Krishna. And while Krishna was crying, he started shouting also, saying, uh, you know, names of the Vrindavan uh, gopis, saying the names of the Vrindavan gopis, Radhe, Vishaka, uh, Vrindha, like that he is, uh, you know, calling those names and shouting and crying. Then um, these uh, Krishna's wives got a doubt. We are giving everything to Krishna. What not we are giving? We are giving the love, we are, give, we are taking care of Krishna, and Krishna is not supposed to miss anybody else. Uh, if at all he is missing, he should miss us only. 
Okay. Uh, Krishna's wife's only he should miss. Then they got a doubt. Who is more dear to Krishna than us? Whom he is missing and crying. Did, uh, did Krishna ever cry for me? <laughs> Everybody started thinking about themselves. Krishna never cried for me, but why Krishna is crying for somebody? Who is that somebody? And what is that relationship for Krishna? He has with those, uh, you know, gopis, uh, you know, whom he is missing so much. They want to know. So who can tell? Who can tell about Krishna's childhood in Dwaraka? So there is no one. The only person who can tell gopis, sorry, uh, Krishna's wives is uh, Balaram because Balaram was staying along with Krishna in uh, Gokul. So Balaram knows everything. So Balaram knows who is Krishna's friend, who is Gopi, who is Gopa, what is their relationship with Krishna and why he is missing so much. So what are the monsters that, uh, that happened during the uh, you know, uh, Vrindavan uh, days, childhood, all these things Balaram knows. The Balram being an elder brother to Krishna, uh, all the wives of Krishna will respect Balram. In the you know Vedic traditions, uh, they don't even show their face to elder brother. They will just close with uh, their uh, sari, and they don't even dare to talk with uh, you know Krishna's elder brother Balram. They don't even stand in front of him. How can they talk? Okay. <laughs> So even nowadays also, in, if you go to Rajasthan or maybe in uh, North Indian, uh, you know, states, you will see this. And they don't show their face to their uncles or their, you know, uh, elders. Okay. So that is the same tradition. And they were not having any, you know, courage to talk with Balram to know about Krishna in the childhood past time. So nobody else. Then who else is there whom they can approach? Is Subhadra. Okay. Subhadra is sister, right? So Subhadra is younger to, sorry, younger to all the Krishna's wives. So they can go and ask Subhadra. But Subhadra unfortunately did not stay in Google. Okay. She, she was not aware of what, what were the past times happened in, uh, in uh, Google. Uh, so Subhadra also said, I'm sorry, I don't know anything. So even I am curious to know <laughs> along with you. If you find anybody who can explain you, tell me. I will also come and sit with you so that I will also know Krishna's past times in childhood. <laughs> so then who else? Who else? The only one person who can tell them is Rohini Mata. That time Rohini Mata was there in Gokul. No Rohini Mata was there in Dwanaka. So the only person who knows about Krishna's childhood in Gokul is only Rohini Mata. Then all 16,000 wives of Krishna went to Rohini Mata and asked Rohini Mata to explain the childhood past times of Krishna. But uh, Rohini Mata denied to explain. These are all secret. Okay. The pleasure. I cannot explain these things. And when I explain these things, uh, if Krishna and Balram listens to it, they will get ecstasy. Okay, they will miss their childhood. They will miss their childhood pastimes, their friends, and they will get ecstasy. So, I don't want to explain because any time Krishna and Balram can hear this. So, I don't want uh, that to happen. Once if they get into ecstasy, then we cannot control them. Okay, we cannot bring back to original uh, state. Please understand, Krishna's pastimes are so sweet that if Krishna hears that, he will be getting into ecstasy. So that is the, you know, sweetness of Krishna's pastimes. So that's why you know, the whole tenth canto is, uh, you know, so sweet uh, that you know, we all should not lose an opportunity to hear Srimad Bhagavatam tenth canto because the whole tenth canto explains about Krishna's pastimes past in childhood. Okay. So now, so how they requested and they convinced Rohini Mata to explain childhood pastimes at one condition. The condition is someone will stand at the gate and they will see nobody is coming inside and they will close the door. Nobody is coming inside the door and, uh, and uh, uh, Rohini Mata will be explaining the Krishna pastimes inside the house, inside that room. Okay. 
So then my question is, who will stand at the gate? Okay, who will stand at the gate? Um, whoever is younger to all should stand at the gate and work like a watchman so that Krishna and Balram are not coming in. Okay, so so then who is younger? Shubhadra. <laughs> Shubhadra is younger. So if any of the wives want to go and stand at the uh, at the door, no doorsteps, then they might feel like you know I might miss something that you you know uh, Rohini Mada is telling. So I might miss what happened uh, in the childhood past tense of Krishna. So nobody was interested to go as, and work as a watchman. So finally, they instructed Subhadra, and Subhadra was not having any other uh, option because she is younger to all and she has to listen to elders. So she was not having any option. So she was standing at the uh, main door and she was ensuring that the Krishna and Balram were not coming inside. And they don't even know that the childhood pastimes are getting discussed here. And Rohini Mata started explaining. And one by one, Putana came and Putana was killed, how Putana was killed, and then uh, Shaktasur came, how Shaktasur was killed, then how Trunavarta was killed, and every past time, Krishna's past time, all the troubles that Krishna faced in the Vrindavan, and how he killed all the demons that uh, Kamsa has sent, and how he protected Vrindavan Vasis, and how he protected Yananda, Yashoda, and the cows, and uh, even the Brahma Vimohana Lila, so everything she was explaining. When she was explaining, everybody, they forgot themselves. They were listening to Rohini Mata, including Shubhadra. <laughs> Shubhadra was standing, but she was just watching, um, you know, towards Rohini only. She is not even noticing somebody is coming from the back. So at the same time, Krishna and Balram came. And they noticed that... Uh, you know, Rohini was explaining the past tense. And then uh, they have they, they were also started listening to the past tense. And as uh, uh, Shubhadra was at the center, okay, and uh, Krishna was standing left uh, to the Shubhadra, and Balram was standing right to the Shubhadra, and they are just watching. And when the story being explained, and they went into ecstasy. And their hands are shrinking, their legs are shrinking. When the ecstasy comes, right? So uh, you don't know how the body becomes, and uh, even the, the hair will stand, um, uh, the body will shrink, and the eyes are wide open. Okay, and um, and um, and this 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 uh, form they got for a moment, and this form they got. Exactly the form that we can see here. Okay, exactly the form. Uh, the Krishna's height reduced, legs more inside, hands more inside, eyes are wide open, and uh, and they are just uh, looking like this. When when you get a surprise in a moment, right? How you feel? That moment they went, and including Balram and Shubhatra also went into that state. So. They are all looking one from this side and one from that side and then center. And Shubhadra did not notice this. Shubhadra did not notice that. She was completely listening to what uh, Rohini Mata was uh, listening. And nobody else has seen this form. This form is called Mahabhava form. Mahabhava Rupa. This form is called Mahabhava Rupa. Means the form that Krishna, Vairam and uh, Shubhadra has taken in the ecstasy. In the ecstasy. That's why it is called Mahabhava Rupa. So, Narada Mahamuni has seen this form at that time. Now, the moment Narada Muni has seen, Narada Muni felt very happy and he never saw such form in the past. And he was very happy. So Krishna has shown a new form. That's Mahabhava Rupa. And he started, you know, uh, Chanting or crying and uh, shouting, saying that, you know, I have seen your Mahabhava Rupa, I have seen your Mahabhava Rupa. The moment when he, uh, when Krishna, Balaram and uh, Nan, uh, Yeshuda, sorry, uh, Subhadra heard about Narayanuni's words that I have seen your ecstasy, ecstatic form, Mahabhava Rupa, Mahabhava Rupa, then immediately they came back to normal form. <laughs> 
So it was for a moment. Then Narmuni said, no, 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 I don't want, I don't want to see this form. I want to see that form again. <laughs> then they said, that's all. And that form is over. Now I'm not going to show you that form anymore. But uh, now we want to see that form again and again, because that's a, a peculiar special form that uh, Narmani again wanted to see that. So he requested. So then Krishna said, I will appear as a Daru Brahma in uh, uh, in the next uh, next uh, Kaliva. So that time you can uh, see me in this form. Okay. So that Daru Brahma is Puri Jagannath. Puri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra. Hmm. And now we will also understand uh, how this uh, deities have come. Okay. How these deities have come. Uh, there was a king called Indra Jumna Maharas. Indra Jumna king. He is a great devotee of Lord Krishna. He is a great devotee of Lord Krishna. So he wanted to worship a Lord Krishna's form. And he is in search of deities. Okay. When he was in search of those deities, he found that in Nilachal Dham, Nilachal, in the, in the form of Nilachal, Krishna appeared and the residents of the Nilachal, they are the tribals. They were worshipping. They were worshipping Nilachal. Uh, uh, Nilachal deities. Nila Madhu. And he is called Nila Madhu. So, Indra Jumna Maharas wanted to, you know, take a darshan of those deities and worship those deities. So then, but this is a secret. Uh, nobody knows this. Except the, um, uh, except the tribals of the Nilachal. Nobody else knows. Nilachal is now called Puri. In, in those days, Nilachal is, uh, the Puri is called Nilachal. So uh, the, the son of the priest uh, taken an assignment from uh, uh, Indra Dimna king and he said, I will go and I will find out where these uh, deities are. And he knows if anybody asks to show the Nilachal, Nila Madhav, then they will not allow. Because they feel it as, you know, the deities are personal to them. And they don't want to show their deities to anybody else. Okay, they don't want to show their deities to anybody else. That Nila Madhav, they don't want to show to anybody else. Only they will worship. The, the tribals will worship. And the leader of the tribals is Vishwa. Uh, some name is there. Vishwa. Vishwa Trima. Uh, the tribal, uh, so uh, he was leading the whole, uh, uh, not tribals. So then, uh, this guy came as a tribal, uh, who, the son of the priest, Vidhyagar, his name is Vidhyagar, Vidhya, Vidhyapati. And uh, Vidhyapati came to the Nilachal and he started living one among the uh, uh, tribals. So, so then he he loved uh, the tribal leader's uh, uh, daughter, okay, tribal leader's daughter, and he got married to her. This is all his mission, in fact. If you come from somewhere and become one among us, that does not mean that they will accept uh, to take him along with them and to show the darshan of, uh, you know, Nila Madhav. That is, that is not going to happen. He realized that. Then he married uh, the girl of uh, the leader and then he become one of them. Even then he was not getting the darshan of Nila Madhav. Even then he was not getting the darshan of Nila Madhav. Then one day he, he threatened his wife saying that if you don't convince your father to uh, you know to take me to the darshan of Nila Madhav I will kill myself. Okay, I will kill myself. So he threatened her. Then now uh, somehow that uh, you know, the lady convinced his father, her father, and uh, you know, he's my husband now, and he's one among us, and you should allow him now. So, then somehow, if you don't allow him, then he will kill himself. So, it is very important that you know, you allow him to take the darshan of Nila Bhagavad. Then, somehow, they agreed. But what they have done is they, 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 they blinded him. And then they have taken him to the Nilachal, Nila Madhav's, uh, you know, deities. 
so he knows uh, well in advance that he will not be shown the path he will not be shown the route how i have to go even though he went and seen the nila madhav he is not aware where he is because he was blinded he was blinded and he has taken to nila madhav's uh, temple so next next day what he did when he was blinded while going there he has gone with some mustard seeds okay mustard seeds he has taken and he put the mustard seed in in his pocket while going on the path he just put the mustard seeds okay so after some days the mustard trees came on the path so now he understood the path uh, to go to the nila madhav's temple so then he has you know gone uh, to uh, indra jumna king and he said so you can follow the mustard plants then you can reach the nila madhav's temple so now you can take darshan of nila madhav okay this is what uh, 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 the brahmins the priest son told him so his mission completed there now he is no more tribal <laughs> his mission completed so now indra jumna king came he wanted to take darshan of uh, nila madhav then he followed the master trees and then he went to the nila madhav temple by the time he reached nila madhav temple nila madhav is not there he disappeared so nila madhav disappeared so then he went very bad very sad then he started crying then nagamani came nagamani came and said see there was a tenure for nila madhav and he can only stay for only half day of brahma in this nilachal parvat okay after that he will not be there then he will come as a daru brahma okay in this form he will come so you even if you try to search for him you cannot find him and this is all so uh, then he went back then uh, uh, when he went back and then he slept he got a dream and uh, krishna appeared in the dream of uh, Uh, Indra Dimna King and he said, "You go and take a bath in uh, Ganga. So a big log will come in the Ganga, in the wooden log. You take that log and then uh, make my deities. Okay, using that log. Um, then the log was so heavy, and this is what uh, uh, Indra Dimna Maharaj got in his dream. Then next day morning he said, 'This is what Krishna told me. I have to go and take bath in Ganga.'" So in Ganga, I will get this log, and uh, this log will appear as a uh, Lord Krishna. So then uh, he went. The log was so big, nobody could hold it. Then they went and asked the tribal leader, and the tribal leader came and uh, he 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 helped. So then the log came. So now this has to be carved like a Krishna deity. Right? This has to be carved like a Krishna deity. Now who will carve? So once sculpture came, there he was Vishwakarma. He came as a normal sculpture, and he said, "I will carve it." But he said, "Only one condition: while I was carving, nobody should disturb me. Okay, I'll close the door and I will carve. After completion of the carving of the deities, I will come out. Till then, nobody should enter into my room, and nobody should even try to disturb me. Okay, if anybody disturbs." Then I will stop carving at that instance, and then I will leave. Okay. Then he said. Then Indra Chunna King agreed for that. Then uh, the Vishwakarma started carving the deities. Every day he is getting sounds from the room. Okay, because he is carving, right? He is carpenter work. He is doing. So every day he is getting big, big sounds. But fifteen days gone. Fourteenth day also he got sounds, and fifteenth day he stopped getting sounds. Sounds are not coming from the room. Then Indra Dimna came was anxious to know what is happening inside. Uh, I am excited to see the deities of uh, Krishna, but uh, today uh, this uh, sculpture is not carving any uh, you know deities. So how can I? How can these deities get you know, carving get finished? And when will I see this? If if uh, uh, you know. Vishwakarma is not, you know, carving this. Then he was anxious and he went and he, then he opened the door. The moment he opened the door, he could see that the uh, deities are half carved. Deities are half carved, not completed. Then Vishwakarma said, 
Why did you open the door? I already told you not to open the door. The moment you open the door, I told I will stop carving further and I will go. And that's all. And I will stop carving here itself. And then he went. Then Indra Gimna King was very sad. Uh, and he was sorry for that. And he was again, uh, you know, thinking uh, about uh, these duties are half carved. No proper nose, no eyes are carved, but not eyebrows. <laughs> okay. So, and then hands are not fully carved. Legs are not fully carved. The complete shape has not come. Okay, it's half carved. Then he was very sad. Then who will complete this? And he was sad. Then Nardamani came. Then he, he came and he saw his uh, duties. Then he said, this is not half carved. This is full carved. This is not half car, this is full car. Then Indrajit the king asked, how come it is a full car? It's a half car. Hands are not fully formed. Nose is not fully formed. Eyes are not fully formed. Uh, legs are not fully formed. Belly is not formed at all. How can it be fully formed? So the king said, no, 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 no. This is Mahabhava form. <laughs> this is the Mahabhava Rupa that I have seen in Dwaparat when Krishna has shown it. When Krishna has shown it. So don't worry. This is how Krishna will look. And Krishna has already promised I will appear as in Mahabhava form again, in the Aru Brahma form. So this is the this is the form. Then Indradhamma King uh, requested Brahma Dev to come and install these deities in Puri. So these are the deities installed in Puri. Okay, by Brahma Dev, Lord Brahma, in the Mahabhava form. So this is how. You know, Krishna, Baladev, and Subhadra appeared in Mahabhava form in Puri. So from then onwards, Puri kings were serving this Mahabhava Rupa. Okay. So, so Jagannath Baladev, Subhadra, Maiki. So this is the past time. This is the story behind uh, this form. So then Radhayastra is a festival that is going to happen every year. Okay, the story behind Radhayatra is also, uh, I will explain in five minutes. Um, actually, uh, there used to be a festival that they, they wanted to celebrate a festival on the birthday of this Jagannath. This is also called, this deity also is called Jagannath deity. Okay, Puri Jagannath deity. They wanted to celebrate the birthday of Jagannath. So what they have done, that means Bhattva and Jagannath and Janmashtami are different. Okay, then the Bhattva and Jagannath is the, the Bhattva of these deities, this form. So when they wanted to celebrate this Bhattva, what they have done, they have taken these deities uh, to the Ganga and uh, uh, they, they bathed and, uh, they brought, and they offered a lot of foods for the Jagannath. Jagannath eat, always he eats. So 24 by 7 he eat. If you go and see in Puri, always the boga will be offered. Okay. And I think 300 times the boga is offered in a day to Chagannath. And every time Chappan move. Okay. So like that, uh, Jagannath is offered on that day. So Jagannath was very happy to eat all the things and he ate and he fell sick. Jagannath fell sick. So when Jagannath was uh, sick, and then they, they stopped all the duty worship for those days when Jagannath was sick and he was treated him. He was treated by the, you know, doctors. <laughs> so, so when doctors came and he start, they started treating Jagannath and Jagannath and uh, Lakshmi, Lakshmi Devi also will be there uh, inside the room and, uh, and Baldev. And uh, they were treating uh, from the fever. Jagannath got fever for the food that he ate and for the you know, Abhishekas that, uh, that were done for Jagannath and he got fever and then um, they started eating and after 15 days, Jagannath was okay. His uh, fever is over and uh, he is normal. Then Jagannath wanted to go to just go out. Just like how we also feel bored of sitting in one room for 15 days and after 15 days, once you get a freedom, what do you feel? Then you want to go and roam around, right? That's how the Jagannath also want to come out uh, from his uh, uh, personal group and he want to just go out. Then Lakshmi Devi said, oh, no, no, you are already sick. Don't go outside so much. 
and uh, you come back immediately even if you go. And then Jagannath promised that, you know, I will come back in, by evening. Just let me just roam around and I will come back by evening. Jagannath went from there and uh, Gundicha Mandir. He went to Gundicha. From the uh, main temple, he went to Gundicha. So actually the main temple is called Dwaraka and the Gundicha is called uh, uh, Vrindava. So if you go to Puri, uh, almost uh, one, one, or one, one and a half kilometer distance, there is a Gundicha temple. The Gundicha temple is called, uh, the interpretation of the Gundicha temple is, uh, uh, you know, Vrindavan. Vrindavan. And uh, the place where these deities are installed, that is uh, Dwarka. Okay. Krishna went to, 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 to uh, that is, uh, that, uh, that first time also is there. So Krishna went to Gundicha and he went inside. That is the place where uh, his mother Ashoda is there and uh, gopis are there. So he does not want to come back from there. Okay. So then he was inside and uh, Krishna is not coming back. So Krishna promised him to come back. Jagannath promised him to come back after, uh, you know, by end of the day. Evening he wanted to come back. But Lakshmi Devi was, uh, you know, Lakshmi was uh, watching for him. So searching for him. So she wanted to... She waited for one day, she, he did not come. She waited for second day, he did not come. She waited for five days, he did not come. Then fifth day, Lakshmi was very, uh, you know, angry. Why Krishna has not come? Then she also came out and she went to Gundicha. Because she came to know that Krishna is in Gundicha Mandir. Then she went to Gundicha. Then Krishna, he does not want to come back to Dwarka. So Krishna said, no, no, no. Don't allow Lakshmi Devi to come inside. Close the doors. Okay, close the doors. Then uh, the pandas. These are the pandas who serve Krishna, right? The pandas are the Nilachal, uh, uh, you know, tribals. Nilachal tribals were serving him. They are called Sabara, Sabari, Sabari pandas. Okay, the Sabari pandas closed the doors of uh, Gundicha, and they did not allow. Uh, Lakshmi Devi to enter into the Krishna's room. Then Lakshmi Devi was very angry. Then Lakshmi Devi waited there only for the whole day, from morning into the evening. She waited, 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 but the pandas did not allow. The pandas did not allow to enter into the uh, Krishna's uh, Dundicha Mandir. Then Lakshmi Devi went and then with the anger that she has, uh, she broke the chariot of Krishna Devi. Krishna came by chariot. Right? In that, in, that is called Radha Yatra actually. Uh, from the uh, uh, Puri Jagannath Mandir to the Gundicha Mandir, Krishna came by Radha. Okay? That is called Radha Yatra. So in between he used to meet so many people there because uh, Krishna was having so many friends, so many places. Right? So every place uh, he used to stop, he used to spend time with them, he used to talk to them and then he go to uh, Vrindavan. Like how he went. So the whole uh, incident is celebrated as Radhayatra festival. Every year we celebrate this. Every year. Even now also if you see on the day of Radhayatra, Lakshmi Devi goes on the fifth day to the uh, Gundicha Mandir and she will break the chariot there. The Radha which goes from uh, temple to the Gundicha Mandir, no, that will be broken there. So that's how it is celebrated. And that's one more uh, pastime that we consider it as uh, you know Radhayatra reason. Actually, if you say after he created Dwaraka, Krishna went to Hastinapur. Krishna went to Hastinapur along with Bal Balram also. Uh, when he was in Hastinapur, uh, as a peace messenger for Pandavas, uh, he went to you know uh, Krukshetra, sorry, Hastinapur, and he tried to convince Duryodhana and uh, all the brothers, so that uh, they can give their share, Pandava's share, but they did not allow, and the Kurukshetra war happened. So, when Kurukshetra war happened towards the end of the Kurukshetra war, everybody came, including uh, the Hastinapur ladies, Kunti Mata, even Shubhadra, even Draupadi, everybody came to Kurukshetra place. Okay. Then uh, it was a time actually for uh, Astrapur war uh, over. 
and the Pandavas become kings. And it was the time that you know Krishna, Balaram, and Subhadra were traveling back to uh, Dwarka. Okay. That time the Brindavan gopis came to know that Krishna is in Hastinapur and he is leaving from Hastinapur to Dwarka. So gopis wanted to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. Because he went at the age of 11 and he never came back. And they are in separation. And they wanted to see Krishna again. They wanted to bring Krishna back to Vrindavan. And they wanted to spend some time with Krishna. So all the gopis went to uh, Kurukshetra place. When Krishna was leaving from Kurukshetra to Dwaraka on a chariot, they sat these three. Krishna, Balaram and Subhadra sat in the chariots. Then that time the gopis reached Kurukshetra war place. And then they requested Krishna and Balaram and Subhadra to come along with them. So they did not agree. Then they did not allow, the gopis did not allow, uh, you know, Krishna to leave from there. And they have taken their saris, top saris, and they tied like a rope. And then they tied to the chariots and they pulled Krishna to Vrindavan. So this is also, this is also on the Radhayatra. So, so this is how the Radhayatra is celebrated every year. And, it, and uh, this used to be celebrated in Puri every year. And with the mercy of uh, Prabhupada, so we are celebrating in Iskama also every year. So coming 7th, July 7th is a Radhayatra. So let us all be part of that Radhayatra. And um, the saying is that if you are participating in Radhayatra, you don't have to do anything. You just participate in Radhayatra. Either you stand in front of the Radha or back side of the Radha or stand anywhere near Radha, right? You will be liberated. That is the benefit that we get. So, not only that, you will be protected by Krishna. You will be protected by Krishna. All your sins will go. The sins that we have done in this lifetime, the sins that we have done in the past lives, everything will go. And we will become sin-free. And we will become a great devotee of Krishna. So, that is the reason even the um, Puri kings use it to serve in every Radhaya, in every Radhaya. Okay. So one time when Puri king was sweeping in front of the Radha, okay, uh, the king of Kashi sent, you know, his minister to offer his daughter to Puri king as a wife. So that day what happened, uh, he has seen, you know, Puri king was sweeping in front of uh, you know, Jagannath Radha. So he felt, that, you know, Puri king is a sweeper. So why do you want to, you know, give your wife, your daughter to such a sweeper? He is not a king. He is just a servant. He is not a master. Then Puri king, uh, uh, you know, uh, did not give his daughter to, sorry, Kasi king did not give his daughter to Puri king. Puri king. Then Puri king said, why you don't give? Then there was a war. In that war, Krishna and Balaram came and protected Puri King. Because Puri King is a servant of Krishna. He himself declares that I am not a king. I am a servant of Puri, Puri Jagana. And Puri Jagana is a king. So I am not the king. That's the mood of the Puri King. So because of that mood that Puri King has, because of that service that Puri King has done, just he, he, he was sweeping in front of the um, Jagannathrata. When the Radhayatra is happening, he was just sweeping. So he got the protection of Krishna forever. And Puri king lost the battle. And uh, you know, he became a servant of Puri. Uh, sorry. Kasi king lost the battle. And he became a servant of Puri king. Okay, finally. So that is the mercy that Krishna gives to us. If you are participating in Jagannath Radhayatra. So that is the glory of Jagannath Radhayatra. So I request all of you to be part of uh, Jagannath Radhayatra on 7th uh, July in Iskand Sheshadripura. It was celebrated like anything. We all will be very happy. Almost 4 or 5 kilometers uh, road. Everything will be blocked. by 6 kilometers I think. Everything will be blocked. It starts at uh, Iskand Jagannath Mandir Sheshadripura. It goes 
um, Mantri Mall, Malishwaram, Malishwaram, and uh, it comes back to again Chispan uh, Sheshadipur. So it will be very nice when you when they are bringing the deities out. Also, it will be you know the the, the way they bring and the way they make Jagannath, Baldev, Shubhadra sit on the chariots and how they carry and how the devotees serve and everybody the the, the whole. Uh, path will be, you know, offered to Krishna. And we also get an opportunity to offer to Krishna on that day. So they will give one place for HSR layout during the path from the Iskan Seshadapura and during the whole Ravayatra path. So one one gully, one one crossroad, one one area devotees will offer to Krishna. So on that day, we all can prepare offerings for Krishna and bring there. So that the table that is given for HSR layout uh, at one crossroad they will give. We can stand there and we can offer to Krishna. Okay. So maybe each devotee can bring three or four items. Maybe if if we can offer fifty six items on that day, it will be great. But let us try. Let us try whatever the maximum number of offerings that we can give. Let us all be part of the Radhika on that day. Let us all get mercy of Jagannath. Okay. Thank you very much. Pancha Kalpataru Mesha Kupa Singh Dukhe Vacha Pati Tana Pavane. No, I need to be a little bit. Anybody has any questions? We will take. Yes. 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 Yes